What kind of future do we have if we destroy our past? So that was a loaded question. Let's hear one more right in quick succession. Has anyone who has pulled down a statue of Churchill, Lincoln, or Columbus thought to ask themselves this question? I doubt it. See, the fact that he says, I doubt it, even emphasizes how loaded of a question it was. It wasn't a question. It was part of his statement. But let's get into the claims, you know, enough with the bad faith questions. Consider what the statue destroyers are in effect saying. They are saying that people in history should have known what we know. That's tantamount to saying they should have known the future. This is, of course, absurd. Yet more and more people believe it. That's not an accurate representation of the views of people who want to take the statues down. I don't know if I have to say that. Like, that's not an accurate representation. And of course, he didn't cite anyone. He could have found so many articles with interviews with people who were at the protests. He could have used any, like, source material for people's justifications for wanting to take the statues down. Like, yeah, people who owned slaves should have known that it was wrong to own slaves. But that's not the reason that I would argue it's good to take down statues of them. It doesn't matter how much individual guilt they have. We don't need to have statues up of people who represent certain ideals. It doesn't matter if they specifically, like, did a bunch of harm out of their own volition rather than just sort of went with the flow of the times. Like, why do we have to talk about that? Put up statues where it's not even slightly questionable that they're fantastic and they represent something good. Because a statue is a symbol. It's, that's why it's so interesting. It's a physical symbol. It's a Rorschach test that we can imprint whatever we want onto. And the really interesting thing is to actually take it down and put something else up that fits our times better. Why not? Who cares? But to people who I would call reactionary, this is a totally stupid argument and that like history is important. So let's hear more of their argument, okay? Apart from breeding ignorance, this kind of education invites the student, the child really, to be judge, jury and executioner over issues that they, and increasingly their teachers, know little or nothing about. Because no one has bothered to teach them the nuance, complexity and context that is history. The way these people, these Prager people, think about individualism is so interesting and contradictory. In the middle of making an argument that these, you know, slave-owning people in history and so on and whatever were actually not so bad because they were influenced by their context, they're like also making this argument that the protesters are only influenced by their context or majority influenced by their context rather than any sort of actual sense of conviction. Why can't they just admit it's a sense of conviction but they disagree with it? That's, as I say in previous videos, my big problem with these people. They don't accurately represent the views of the people they're disagreeing with. And that's something to always be on the lookout for because it's the surest sign of dishonesty. Listen to him portraying, like, leftists texting each other. <laughs> it also breeds arrogance. I know things these people did not know, therefore I am better than they were, they have nothing to teach me, in fact I must teach them, and down comes the statue. That's genuinely hilarious that they have different bubbles talking to each other, as if people just have these like, loud agreeing conversations over text. So if you're like, a little too steeped in PragerU videos like I am, you already know that they're gonna bring up the 1619 Project, the New York Times project to basically help people better understand the founding of America as not just starting in 1776, but actually originating with chattel slavery, the whole way that America became a global superpower by exploiting slave labor and basically building uh, the modern global capitalist superpower that we are. But obviously Prager doesn't like the 1619 project, but instead of like quoting it or anything like that, he just- 1776, the American Revolution? In the new history, that was just about protecting the founders' slave interests. These men, some of the most remarkable humans to have lived at any time, are to be understood simply by their attitude towards this one issue. The 1619 Project seeks to portray America, the freest, most prosperous nation in world history, as exceptional only in one respect, insofar as being exceptionally bad. The 1619 Project, which I haven't read all the articles 
yet I really plan to because the ones I've read are very, very well done and informative. But it's not about... Maybe they do make that point. I don't know. He didn't specifically cite it. That would have been helpful. But as I, I've never heard that argument made elsewhere. And basically, I understand the 1619 Project to help uh, to basically just be helping us reframe our understanding of the U.S. as not just sort of a political entity, but, but a political economic entity and understanding the economic foundations of the American superpower. It's good that he mentions the 1619 Project because that takes it beyond the physicality of the statues and into the realm of the ideas and shows you that what he's talking about is directly applicable to media and history, how we understand things to have gone, basically, that you can have a view of traditional 1776, we got free, that was awesome, or you could sort of tear down that statue and, you know, come up with your own, like, understandings about things based on alternative sources, you know, beyond the traditional uh, mediums and stuff like that. So PragerU doesn't like that, and neither does this fellow. So let's hear a little more of what he has to say, and then we're going to get out of here. I'm not going to go claim by claim. I counted 20 claims without evidence, and I didn't find any evidence. There were no claims that were supported by evidence in the entire video. But 20 claims, and you could probably find more if you define it differently. Sometimes there are multiple claims stuck in sort of one sentence if you really think about it. There are like implicit claims. They spent half the video making up what a leftist believes and, you know, it's ridiculous. So it's not even worth speaking to, but... I just find the overall concept interesting, so that's why I wanted to make this video. But let's hear a little bit more, and then we'll get out of here. A healthy, humane, and in the truest sense liberal mind does not view history as a mere playpen for our moral judgment. It recognizes that people in the past acted on the information they had just as we do today. Sure, it would have been nice if the founders of America had abolished slavery in its constitution. Some, in fact, tried very hard to do so. But had they been unwilling to compromise, there would be no constitution and no United States. All the sacrifices of the revolution would have been lost, so a compromise balancing the interests of the northern states and the southern states was reached. Unlike my opponents, I do not view history as a moral pl playpen. <laughs> That's what they say. They think that's a fair argument to say that their opponents view history as a moral playpen. Bro, we're talking about putting a symbol in our community and what it represents. Take a statue down if you don't like what it represents. How do you not support people's democratic right to speak up for themselves? It's so obviously contradictory. That's why PragerU makes bad arguments. This guy's probably not even stupid. But you can't support something with a contradictory foundation. These people love direct action. These people love people taking to the streets and speaking up for their freedom. They love it. They just have to pretend like they don't when it's people that they don't like because, you know. It's so clearly badass to have statues torn down. I mean, did you see all that footage last year? I mean, in the summer and in the protests, like hopefully, like keep it up, everybody. There were heads toppling for days, for weeks. You'd open up social media and you'd see a new statue in a new country and you just see them toppling and it feels so good. Take it down. Who cares? If people want the statues up, then they can go protest. That happened in many places. This is how a society moves forward. I want people to speak up for their beliefs. And it's great that these Prager videos exist to just show how bad the arguments are for keeping these statues up. They don't even name the specific examples of people having their statues torn down. They cite examples of people like Lincoln, who no one was talking about taking their statues down. And they don't accurately portray the arguments for taking the statues down. They say that people basically want to hold the past people to a higher standard, rather than actually making the argument that these statues represent something that's antithetical to progress and social equality, which is actually important as much as it might trigger someone like Dennis Prager. And three, I didn't. I don't think I had a three. I think three was just I should end this video because, you know, I'm done and I'm tired. And, you know, that plant is wilting. I haven't watered it in like a little bit too long. So you can uh, check out the other videos. Like I said, I have a few too many about PragerU if you're 
into this fetish like I am. And uh, I have a Patreon if you want to support the channel. No one does yet, but people will eventually. And if you're one of the first people, you'll get to be like, yo, I supported What's Therapy like, you know, before anyone else. And uh, that might have, you know, utility value. You know, uh, if you like the video, you can let me know in the comments section. And if you disliked it, you can and will and probably have already uh, let me know as well. So thank you.